sex. The incredible experience called sexuality should never be dealt with shame, that's for sure. And not with guilt and not with fear. For shame is not virtue, and guilt is not goodness, and fear is not honor. And not with lust, for lust is not passion. And not with abandon, for abandon is not freedom. And not with aggressiveness, for aggressiveness is not eagerness. And obviously not with the idea of control or power or domination. For these have nothing to do with love. And the good news is it's all right to love sex. It's also all right to love yourself. In fact, it's mandatory. I love sex. I love money. I love me. I love power. I love glory. I love fame. I love success. I love winning. I love the adulation of others. I love being better. I love having more. I love knowing why, and I love knowing God. Yet I tell you this. Love, love, love the things you desire, for your love of them draws them to you. These things are the stuff of life. When you love them, you love life. When you declare that you desire them, you announce that you choose all the good that life has to offer. So choose sex, all the sex you can get. And choose power, all the power you can muster. And choose fame, all the fame you can attain. And choose success, all the success you can achieve. And choose winning, all the winning you can experience. Yet do not choose sex instead of love, but as a celebration of it. And do not choose power over, but power with. And do not choose success at the expense of others, but as a tool with which to assist others. And do not choose winning at any cost, but winning that costs others nothing, and even brings them gain as well. Go ahead and choose the adulation of others, but see all others as beings upon which you can shower adulation and do it. Go ahead and choose being better, but not better than others, rather than better than you were before. Go ahead and choose having more, but only so that you may have more to give. And yes, choose knowing how and knowing why, so that you can share all knowledge with others. And by all means, choose to know God. In fact, choose this first and all else will follow. Give yourself abundant pleasure, and you will have abundant pleasure to give others. Likewise, if you give yourself the pleasure of power, you have more pleasure of power to share with others. The same is true of fame, wealth, glory, success, or anything else which makes you feel good. Feeling good is the soul's way of shouting, this is who I am. Feeling good is your way of telling yourself that your last thought was truth, that your last word was wisdom, that your last action was love. Self-denial is self-destruction. Yet also know this. Self-regulation is not self-denial. Regulating one's behavior is an active choice to do or not do something based on one's decision regarding who they are. If you declare that you are a person who respects the rights of others, a decision not to steal or rob from them is hardly self-denial. It is self-declaration. If acting irresponsible, if behaving in a way which you might damage others or cause hardship or pain is what makes you feel good, then you have not evolved very far. Awareness is the key here. It is the job of God's messengers to increase awareness among others, that they may understand that what is done to or for one is done to or for all, because we are all one. When you come from we are all one, it is virtually impossible to find that hurting another feels good. So-called irresponsible behavior vanishes. It is within these parameters evolving beings seek to experience life. It is within these parameters that I say grant yourself permission to have all that life has to offer, and you will discover it has more to offer than you have ever imagined. You are what you experience. You experience what you express. You express what you have to express. You have what you grant yourself. So express your sexuality, lovingly, openly, playfully, joyfully, outrageously, passionately, sacredly, romantically, humorously, spontaneously, touchingly, creatively, unabashedly, sensually, and of course, frequently. 
Sexual expression is the inevitable result of an eternal process of attraction and rhythmic energy flow which fuels all of life. I have built into all things an eternal process of attraction and rhythmic energy that transmits its signals throughout the universe. Every person, animal, plant, rock, tree, every physical thing sends out energy like a radio transmitter. You are sending off energy, emitting energy right now from the center of your being in all directions. This energy, which is you, moves outward in wave patterns. The energy leaves you, moves through the walls, over mountains, past the moon, and into forever. And it never, ever stops. Every thought you've ever had colors this energy. Every word you've ever spoken shapes it. Everything you've ever done affects it. You've heard the saying, sending off good vibes, and it's true. Now every other person is naturally doing the same thing. And so the ether, the air between you is filled with energy. A matrix of intertwining and interwoven personal vibrations that form a tapestry more complex than you could ever imagine. It is powerful and affects everything, including you. You then send out newly created vibrations, impacted as you are by the incoming vibrations to which you are being subjected and these in turn add to and shift the matrix, which in turn affects the energy field of everybody else, which impacts the vibrations they send off, which impacts the matrix, which impacts you, and so on and so forth. The matrix, the combined current energy field within any given parameter, it is a powerful vibe. It can directly impact, affect, and create physical objects and events. Your popular psychology has termed this energy matrix the collective consciousness. It can and does affect everything on your planet. The prospects of war and the chances for peace. Geophysical upheaval or a planet be calmed. Widespread illness or a worldwide wellness. All is the result of consciousness. All the world is exchanging energy all the time. Your energy is pushing out, touching everything else. Everything and everyone else is touching you. But now an interesting thing happens. At some point, midway between you and everything else, these energies meet. To make a more vivid description, let's imagine two people in a room. They're on the far side of the room from each other. We'll call them Tom and Mary. Now Tom's personal energy is transmitting signals about Tom in 360 degrees. Out into the universe. So if that energy wave hits Mary. Mary, meanwhile, is emitting her own energy. Some of that hits Tom. These energies meet midway between Tom and Mary. Here, the energies unite and combine to form a new energy unit we'll call Tom Mary. It is the energy of Tom and Mary combined. Tom and Mary could call this energy the body between us. For it is just that, a body of energy to which both are connected, which both are feeding the, con the continuing energy which flows to it, and which is sending energies back to its two sponsors along the thread. It is this experience of Tom Mary, which is the truth of Tom and Mary. It is this holy communion that both are drawn for the feel of sublime joy of the body between, of the joined one, of the blessed union. Tom and Mary standing off at a distance can feel in a physical way what is going on in the matrix. Both are urgently drawn toward this experience. They want to move toward each other at once. Now their training sets in. The world has trained them to slow down, to mistrust the feelings, to guard against hurt. But the soul wants to know till Mary now. If the two are lucky, they will be free enough to set aside their fears and trust that love is all there is. They are irrevocably drawn, these two, to the body between them. Till Mary is already being experienced metaphysically and Tom and Mary will want to experience it physically so they'll move closer. Not to get to each other. It looks that way to the casual observer, but they are each trying to get to Till Mary. They are trying to reach that place of divine union which already exists between them. The place where they already know they are one and what it is like to be one. So they move toward this feeling they are experiencing 
And as they close the gap between them, as they shorten the cord, the energy they are both sending to Tomeri travels a shorter distance and is thus more intense. They move closer still. The shorter the distance, the greater the intensity. They move closer still. Once more, the intensity increases. Now they stand just a few feet apart. The body between this is glowing hot, vibrating with terrific speed. The connection to and from Tomeri is thicker, wider, brighter, burning with the transfer of incredible energy. These two are said to be burning with desire. They are. They move closer still. Now they touch. The sensation is almost unbearable, exquisite. They feel at the point of their touch all the energy of Tomeri, all the compacted, intensely unified substance of their combined being. Now the two embrace and they close the gap even further. Tom and Mary can feel Tomeri between them and they want to get even closer, to literally meld with Tomeri, to become Tomeri in physical form. Tom's body is now ready to literally enter Mary. Mary's body is ready to literally receive Tom within her. The tingling, the burning is now beyond intense. It is indescribable. The two physical bodies join. Tom, Mary, and Tomeri become one in the flesh. Still the energies flow between them, urgently, passionately. They heave, they move, they can't get enough of each other, can't get close enough. They strive to get close, close, closer. They explode, literally, and their entire bodies convulse. The vibrations send ripples to their fingertips. In the explosion of their oneness, they have known the God and the Goddess, the Alpha and the Omega, the All and the Nothing, the essence of life, the experience of that which is. There are physical chemistries. The two have become one. And a third entity often is created of the two in physical form. Thus an outpicturing of Tomeri is created. Flesh of their flesh. Blood of their blood. They have literally created life. Have I not said that ye are gods? This dance that I've just described, this energy interaction is occurring all the time in and with everything. Your energy beamed from you like a golden light is interacting constantly with everything and everyone else. The closer you are, the more intense the energy, the further away, the more subtle. Yet you are never totally disconnected from anything. There is a point between you and every other person, place, or thing which exists. It is here that the two energies meet forming a third, much less dense, but no less real energy unit. Everyone and everything on the planet and in the universe is emitting energies in every direction. This energy mixes with all other energies, crisscrossing in patterns of complexity beyond your imagination or understanding. The crisscrossing, intermingling, energies racing between everything that you can call physical is what holds physicality together. This is the matrix of which I have spoken. It is along this matrix that you sent signals to each other, messages, meanings, healings, and other physical effects created sometimes by individuals but mostly by mass consciousness. These innumerable energies are, as I have explained, attracted to each other. This is called the law of attraction. In this law, like attracts like. Like thoughts attract like thoughts along the matrix. And when enough of these similar energies clump together, their vibrations become heavier. They slow down and some become matter. Thoughts do create physical form. And when many people are thinking the same thing, there is a very high likelihood their thoughts will form a reality. The matrix draws itself into itself, exactly like a black hole. It pulls like energy to like energy, even drawing physical objects toward each other. Those objects must then repel each other, move away, or they will merge forever. In effect, disappearing in their present form and taking on a new form. So all beings of consciousness move away from the permanent melding in order to maintain their relationship to all other beings. If they do not, they would meld into all other beings and experience the oneness forever. This is the state from which we have come. Having moved away from this state, we are constantly reattracted to it. This ebb and flow, to and fro movement is the basic rhythm of the universe and everything in it. This is sex, the synergistic energy exchange. You are constantly being attracted, compelled toward union with another. 
then at the moment of unity, being repelled by conscious choice away from that unity. Your choice is to remain free of it so that you can experience it. For once you become a part of that unity and remain there, you cannot know it as unity since you no longer know separation. For God to know itself as the all of it, God must know itself as not the all of it. In you and in every other energy unit of the universe, God knows itself as parts of the whole. And thus gives itself the possibility of knowing itself as the all in all in its own experience. I can only experience what I am by what I am not. Yet I am what I am not, and so you see the divine dichotomy. Now, as I said, this natural ebb and flow, this natural rhythm of the universe, typifies all of life. Toward each other you are compelled, as if by some urgent force, only to pull away and separate, only to urgently push toward each other, again, once more to separate, and again, to hungrily, passionately, urgently seek total union, together apart, together apart, together apart. Your bodies dance in a movement so basic, so instinctual, that you have very little conscious awareness of deliberate action. At some point, you shift into automatic. No one needs to tell your body what to do. They simply do it with the urgency of all of life. This is life itself expressing itself as life itself. And this is life producing new life in the bosom of its own experience. All of life works on such a rhythm. All of life is the rhythm. And so all of life is imbued with the gentle rhythm of God. What you call the cycles of life, food grows in such cycles. Seasons come and go. Planets spin and circle. Suns explode and implode and explode again. Universes breathe in and out. All of it happens, all of it in cycles, in rhythms, in vibrations, matching the frequencies of God and Goddess. The all, for God is the all, and Goddess is everything. And there is nothing else that is. And all that ever was, is now, and ever shall be, is your world without end. Amen.